Those were her hair and caressed. We're here to see Bernie Burns and Gavin Free. Where's the teeth? They're not here, but they're going to be. Keep tuned. Matt Yale cut, I would immediately throw up under the table. <laughs> I'm very unprofessional as well. I kept laughing because he makes the dumbest faces when he takes a bite from the sandwich. He can do this like one eyed sort of. It was just the funniest thing to me. So he had to do that wet sandwich over and over again. It's my favorite thing. Yeah, but I think the favorite thing, Gavin, that you and I do together, either like the achievement hunter videos that we do, but I think the podcast the thing that we do together yes. the most. Yeah. Who listens so, to the podcast? I thought that was everyone putting their hand up for a question. And I'm like, <laughs> my mind went crazy. Hey, um, you, you got the, the new live action stuff that's going to be coming out later this year. Do you have a release date for anything? Any of that stuff? No, but we're going to be talking about that at RTX. Uh, the new. So we're moving away from doing the one-off shorts, and we're moving towards doing shorter mini series. So we have like anywhere between three and six episodes for a lot of different things. Uh, we've already got one of them done. Uh, it's just it's ready to come out. And they're not all live action. Some of them are animated as well. Like if you've uh, kept up with uh, 15 people at this point uh, took, on the animation. Took photos. Wow, he yeah, was looking and, uh, this way. So it's all different. The machinima is pretty much all done for the entire season. Uh, we'll go back and write new scenes or bonus scenes as we need to fill in for the animation. But the animation is done in different stages, like uh, some of it is completely done, you know, with polish and render, and some of it's just like basically animatics. And I'd say they're probably three quarters of the way done with the, the whole season. How are you guys liking the animation so far in season ten? Yeah. Yeah, we're really proud of it. Um, you know, it's a, we really kind of stepped up the quality of it year after year, and uh, this year I think we're all pretty amazed by what that team is doing. Really proud of it, and. Uh, if you haven't heard before, the voice of Sigma this season is played by Elijah Wood, and he will uh, he'll be making his debut very, very soon in an upcoming episode of season 10. Woo! Can't wait to see that. Yeah. Have you guys worked out? We'd have a connection, maybe tomorrow. Have you guys worked out whether Australia is a uh, country or a continent? <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, half the table had that worked out before we showed up here, but the other half the table wasn't sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what is wrong with the school I went to. It's British. Oh yeah, I can tell you what's wrong with it. It's in the UK. That might be the problem with it. I actually learned on Twitter from, we got replies from UK encompasses the entirety of North and right. South America. You know, you, you know what we know. We know. <laughs> we know. Damn. I'm um, just wondering like, what your process is of having an idea and then what happens between that and when it turns into what we see on the website. Uh, is there any particular show that you're wondering about? Uh, any of them. Do you have like, the same process for anything you make? Or? Why don't you talk about how Achievement Hunter works? Like, coming up with ideas for videos. Yeah. Well, we, well with Achievement Hunter, we just play video games and then come up with... It's less now about achievements and more about how can we be dumb while playing a video game. People want to watch this and stuff like that. But I imagine with the narrative stuff, it's very different. It is. Um, I mean, a lot of times, the, if you know, a lot of times we have things that we want to do, and those are milestone out for season, season for ten years now of making this. Um, so a lot of the stuff we're doing in season ten that was planned since season six, not all of it, uh, but some of the bigger milestones and you know, their plot lines. Uh, but if we ever get stuff for just like general ideas, uh, one of the things we can do for inspiration is just go into the environments and just kind of wander around. I mean, that's how the first five seasons of Red vs. Blue were written. You know, we just sort of wander around Blood Gulch and say, okay, we have a battle rifle, we have a skull, how can we make a skull funny, you know? And then we pull it out of someone's head and beat him to death with it. So, that's how we can find inspiration, just kind of in the limits of what's available. And then, I don't know how Monty's process works for animation, it's just a lot of spinning from something and jumping. But, it's a following question about the technical limitations you had in the early seasons. Now that you can animate characters in all those situations, how does that impact the story? Or do you prefer any of those technical limitations? Well, it makes a lot of things possible. Um, before, when we had, we were doing the show as just Machinima, where we were filming it in the game. Obviously, I had to write seven years of Red Blue, and the only verbs that I could use were buttons on the controller. So, a, you know, a character can only jump or look. Look was a big one. 
or you know nod or crouch. Uh, and so it's hard to tell a story when people can't even you know point at something. You know they can't pick up something. Uh, so you have to uh, write a lot of what you want to do. Like the character has to say. It's, it's, you can't really show it a lot of times. The character just has to say it. Um, and now with the animation, we can actually tell a story by showing it. Are you going to get a with it? Yes. Does that make sense? Um, like you saw the most Shut recent up. episode of Red vs. Blue, there's a lot of funny jokes that take place like with the jetpacks <laughs> and the placement of people. See, I was you right. Know, we can do a lot more visual Shut gags, up. which but is I had a lot more fun. And, uh, I should, I should have bet the the that's fine, but... They're all people who have studied the original shows, Jim, and so they've stayed really faithful to it, especially with the characters from the, the original seasons. Uh, Gavin, can I jump with your Minecraft video? So let's close. Thanks. Uh, are you going uh, on a different level? Are you going to do any more slow mo guys stuff? Slow mo guys stuff. Well, yeah, I don't have a slow motion camera anymore, but maybe I should get hold of one and carry on doing it. Thanks. So, when you have, how do you come up with ideas for slow mo guys? Usually I look at Dan, the guy I do it with, and I, I think, how can I hurt him? <laughs> and I, I just convince him, yeah, it'll look good in slow-mo, trust me. <laughs> and then throw a football his head and stuff like that. The pain will be in real time, <laughs> but the images will be in slow motion. So we were doing something yesterday, and you said, you pointed out, that will look good in slow motion. I what it was. Uh, yeah, I think I saw a bird like swoop in and take a drink from a puddle, like without landing, and then take off again. So, yeah, that would be good. How, how would you shoot that though? Like, what's the most amount of time your buffer for what you can shoot with a slow camera? Well, I can only we, I can only usually shoot for four seconds, but it's in a constant loop. So I actually stop the camera. I don't start it. Like, it just records, and then I stop it, and you've got the previous four seconds. Oh, so that's why after every shot or something happens, you run off. Yeah. Right. So I, I could leave the camera just sat on that shot all day until the thing happens and I just stop it. Okay. Makes sense. Right. Sorry, we, we were talking okay. amongst ourselves up here. The podcast again. Um, we're in relation to Halo 4 and uh, future seasons of Bruce C. Uh, where are you planning on taking that? Um, like with the game and stuff? Well, with Halo 4, they're actually going to have an explanation for what the multiplayer guys are doing. And so we're kind of waiting, like everyone else, to see what that explanation is. Um, but, you know, we always just kind of hold back and, and wait and see. When we went from Halo 1 to Halo 2, uh, it was a big deal. Everyone kept asking, because Halo 2 was coming, um, are you going to use Halo 2 for Red vs. Blue? And it's like the, the most commonly asked question. So we felt compelled to use Halo 2 right away. And as a result of that, we didn't spend enough time with the game. We just kind of jumped straight in. And so the first couple episodes that we did in Halo 2 were not our best. So we actually like to usually take about six months with the game and explore it and see what it can do and then figure out what we can write for it. I remember the, the aspect ratio of the first Halo 2 stuff was different because you used a different weapon instead of the... Love the show. Um, I've got a YouTube channel, but I'm struggling to get off. How, how did you guys actually proceed in the show? Yeah, it's tough to So on your YouTube channel, what do you do? Oh, pretty much gaming and yeah, pretty much gaming. Yeah. Like let's play kind of videos where you play games yeah, some content time. and um, also like adventures like Minecraft and all that. Okay. Uh, well, the, it's it's a it's a good question and it's one we can't necessarily answer because when we started, it was before YouTube, and so all these things didn't exist. Um, I think when we started doing Red vs. Blue is not the longest running web series. The only other web series at the time was a show called Homestar Runner. Homestar? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, big fans, by the way, of that. They were a huge influence over us when we started. And uh, I don't know. Um, it, it, we, we came from an era when we didn't have a whole hell of a lot of competition. And now, on YouTube, every minute that YouTube exists, 72 hours of footage are uploaded every single minute. So if you wanted to watch every video on YouTube, you would fall three days behind every minute you try to do that. Um, that's a lot of noise. So I don't know. Uh, Gavin just recently started a channel and stood out. Do you have any tips for standing out on YouTube? Just do quality over quantity is what I would say. I would agree with that. Don't put up a video you don't like. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, one of these kind of thing where, we, you know, we have uh, 3,000 videos on the Rishi channel, uh, and so in a way we kind of make our own noise that we have to keep with, and we're, we're trying to work through that right now. Uh, but a lot of the successful channels, they're about something. Like, if you go to Gavin's channel, you know that you're going to get a slow motion video. If you go to Freddie W and you watch Freddie W, you know you're going to get a cool visual effects video. Um, 
And so being consistent is important, both in your content and also in your release schedule, so people know when to come back. You can also pretty quickly see what people are responding well to. Like if you did a different game, and maybe one game got less views than another game, do more on the game that did well, and then you'll probably get a bigger audience that way. Yeah, that's just yeah. But we, we, we do experiments all the time, like, uh, we just recently decided, hey, let's let's focus on a game that not many people know about. And so we started doing videos in a, in a mod called Day Z, or Day Z. Um, and so we started doing that. So we're just seeing, like, can we help a game that not many people know about grow? So we're, we're also playing with things all the time. What's your favorite line, and could you recreate that line?